Hey, Christy, come and record the Drift Ad. Today's episode is brought to you by Drift Outfitters in downtown Toronto, Ontario. Drift Outfitters is your source for all things fly fishing. From waders and boots to thread and feathers, Drift has it all. Check in on their website for their latest updates and policies regarding shopping during the pandemic. Curbside pickup for your online and phone orders is a great way to get the gear you need. And they're shipping for free across Canada on orders over 100 bucks. Visit driftoutfitters.com to learn more. Hello and welcome to another episode of SoFly. It's the middle of January and uh, it's really cold here and it's dark because it's the morning and my name is Mitch and uh, we've got Aldo. Hello. We've got Yelma. Hello. Good morning. And uh, we're, we're recording another episode of uh, the podcast today in the morning because we've got a guest on from uh, South Africa. So we had to make the time uh, thing work. I think this is the first time we've... Oh no, we did one with Joe one time where we had to drink coffee and kind of wake up. But it's kind of, I kind of like this. I'm not going to lie. Richard Whale is a born, uh, was born in Cape Town, South Africa on January 10th, 1985. He describes himself as a sole fly fisherman that loves all aspects of the sport and loves all types of fish. Richard began fly fishing at the age of 12, fishing both salt and fresh water. In his early 20s, he began fly fishing competitively, competitively for Western Province, uh, and it's around this time he also began guiding. Um, Yilma and I were actually lucky enough to spend a day fishing with uh, with Richard for rainbow trout and can absolutely vouch for his incredible guiding skills. It was like one of the best days fly fishing we've ever had. Um, he's also found himself on the retail side of fly fishing, having been a partner in multiple fly fishing shops in Cape Town. Um, and these days, Richard spends most of his time working in the boating industry. His day job keeps him busy. So anytime he does have to fish is usually served, uh, reserved for himself. Um, but he still does guide for a select group of clients and ties up the odd custom fly order. We're super excited to have Richard on the show today. Richard, happy belated birthday. Oh, cheers. Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> I actually went, uh, did some free diving on the day um, yep. for, for crayfish. It's like rock lobster. Um, but yeah, no, thanks for the wish. Much appreciated. Free diving for rock lobster? Wow. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like minus 10 here right now, and it's dark and cold, and, you know, Canada yeah. winters are not very not very forgiving. No. Yeah. No, I can imagine. We we kind of in the heart of our summer. I think yesterday was uh, 27 degrees south this, the side mm. in Cape Town. Oh, man. So, oh, yeah, God. pretty much our warm time of the year. Oh, God, I love that. Yeah, wow. that's like, uh, I think we shot, uh, we were down there shooting a commercial in like what was it april yilma april yeah. april yeah so it was it was cold yeah. here and i remember being there like sending snapchats to people and they were so pissed off at me because cape town's beautiful <laughs> you know and <laughs> it was the best thing we uh we we met richard yilma and i were down like i said shooting and we met richard and got to actually go out uh for a day fishing and and uh fish rainbows where whereabouts was that um in uh south africa again richard Okay, so yeah, we we you, you guys were were down. Um, we were like based yeah, in Cape Town, mm-hmm. um, and then the spot uh, we went to go fish. It kind of falls under the general explanation of the streams. We just call the Cape Streams, yeah. um, of which there are a couple of different streams and tributaries. But um, the one we were on was the uh, the Small Blau River, and it's like. Uh, part of a little mountain range called the Limitberg mountain range. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you can remember it's about 45 minutes uh, to an hour drive from Cape Town CBD, um, kind of pop through the tunnel that goes straight through the mountain. And then, yeah, you arrive in the valleys on the, on the other side. And yeah, we were fishing. If I recall, it was B6, um, yeah. kind of the, our, uh, our rivers um, that we fish a lot are they're kind of managed by the Cape Piscatorial Society. Um, so it's like a nice, nice organized scenario where you you actually book a beat for for the day as a member and um, obviously organize the day permits for you guys. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's about a two kilometer stretch. And yeah, our rivers are freestone rivers. Um, so we, as you remember, we, we most of the time are wet wading, fishing upstream, um, often sighting fish, whether you see them rising or holding um, or prospecting a good run. Um, and yeah, there's, it's a yeah, freestone river, kind of gin clear, um, fish is best uh, sort of just after our winter months, we actually, we have a close season of about three months, which is during like the heavy rain season. Um, mm. That's just kind of the spawning time for the fish. Right. And then, yeah, 
So then most of the summer months uh, is when we'd be fishing them. Mm-hmm. Um, does get a little bit hot um, towards like midsummer, sort of now Jan mm-hmm. time, um, and the fish can become a little bit lethargic. Uh, but uh, there's always there's always a good beat and some spots if you know the rivers well enough that you'll you'll find fish feeding throughout the, the summer season. That was, I mean, unreal yeah. rainbow fishing. You know, I remember like I was flying over. Yilma was already in Cape Town, and he's like. Yeah, we're gonna go fly fishing for like we have a day off. We're gonna go fly fishing. I'm like, what? We're gonna go saltwater fly fishing? He's like, we're gonna go rainbow trout fly fishing. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea you could do that, and I was like mind blown. And then the fishing was incredible. Like it was, it was just, it's really well taken care of, you know. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. And that was a beautiful river. I, I remember seeing, but I do remember seeing a lot of baboon scat, which was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get. Yeah, so the yeah. definitely the, the nature is totally different i mean um probably one of the prettiest rivers i've ever been on and um yeah it was wonderful i mean yeah mitch thought we were going to go saltwater fishing but i to my surprise as well i didn't know rainbows is, would be would be something to target as well yeah is that what you like yeah. is that what you got into when you started fly fishing was it rainbows or was it salt right away yeah i mean so like in south africa there's actually we have a very big sort of fly fishing um, community and constituency um, and like down here in Cape Town um, historically and currently like the the Cape streams is like always a, like a major factor um, and always has been probably the biggest aspect of fly fishing down here right. um, although the saltwater fly fishing aspect has has grown a lot in in recent years um but yeah i, I mean you guys were just mentioning the uh, like yoma mentioned the the sort of environment and the the this the scenery like on the streams and it's just all kind of cape streams it's these small streams that ha- hold trout it's like we like an hour away from like sea level where it's way too warm for trout but like as you climb into that mountain range you then have a higher altitude and then the water's cool enough to to hold the trout so it, it's quite a unique sort of freestone river scenario a small stream holding trout um which yeah as i said is kind of unique to 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 cape town south africa yeah. um so that has as i said it's always been a big like uh, quite like the the major aspect of fly fishing down here mm-hmm. um but i think fly fishing like all all around the world is just becoming so so dynamic and and not necessarily like a specific species driven driven sports so, i mean yeah. down here and Cape Town, I suppose. So, like all all around the world, you have your sort of urban fly fishermen guys going and targeting carp and in, mm-hmm. in various bodies of water, yeah. like even even catfish and, and barbel, tilapia, all sorts of things. Um, but but yeah, I suppose our Cape Screams trout are, is like our kind of purest form of uh, of fly fishing recognised down here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, on the on the saltwater side. Yeah, that's that opens like a whole new can of worms because there's so many different species to target. Yeah. And yeah, to get back to your your question, like I like I've always grown up um, like from as old as I could walk, being interested in in fishing, which generally starts with conventional fishing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, my family we got like a holiday spot at the at the Breda River mouth um, in Cape Infanta, which is like one of our best estuaries. So I kind of grew up fishing for 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 Grunter and Leary's Leary's, which are Garrick. I send you some pics. Very much like a Jack, Tra- similar to a Jack Travel, or part of the Karen Gadea family, which like makes up GTs and Jacks, and that's like kind of our version of it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I basically grew up like targeting them on conventional like stick baits and lure. And then yeah, when I was uh, around twelve years old, I kind of thought, how, oh, what's the next step? And yeah, that's when I actually got into the fly fishing side. So usually in Cape Town, South Africa, you always start with trout, <laughs> um, yeah. whether it's like still waters or or on the streams. And then like over time, people progress to salt water. I kind of did it in reverse um uh i like started off on the salt water side um so like double hauling on a nine weight um, <laughs> before i even picked up a three or five weight yeah. um, but then yeah still during school days i met a, a good mate of mine uh, matthew rich he's he's actually a phenomenal uh, competitive fly fisherman um who he fished for the south african team and done quite a few of the the world's competitions around the world but 
long story short, he, he then got me into more of the freshwater stuff when we were at school, um, which then progressed into doing the, the competitive fly fishing, um, which I must add is a huge leap for um, anybody. If you, even if you don't really want to like get too hectically involved in the competitive side, mm-hmm. um, it's an amazing way to like fast track to fly fishing and, and learn from a whole lot of people. But, um, and then, yeah, after that, it all kind of just amalgamated into one fly fishing journey of fresh water, salt water, rivers, streams, still waters. Yeah. And then obviously with the, as the passion grew, then more of the, the international trips and, and that side of things. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of my, <laughs> my route to the fly fishing journey. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So the competitive stuff you were talking about, like how did, how did that stuff come about? Cause you, you talked about, you know, the fly fishing scene in um, South Africa being pretty big. And, and so is there like a big competitive scene there? Yeah. In, in Cape town, we've got um, the Cape Piscatorial society. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like officially it's the oldest fishing body, be it recreational or any form um, in South Africa. And they've got like really cool, um, uh offices and club room like set in cape town cbd that's been there for for ages i can't quote exactly how old they are but it's that they've been around for a long time yeah um and like through through them you also meet more guys which are involved in the competitive scene and yeah it's it's as i said it's it's strange when you have a look at like world comps we always like i've, I've never gone as far as like going and uh representing the country overseas and worlds um but uh, if you have a look at the, there's always the, the Czech Republic guys, the guys from the States are, are in recent years become really big. You've got the yeah. UK, the Irish. It's quite a small group of countries and uh, South Africa somehow it just like fits in there. Um, right. But I think historically South Africa is strange like that. Like we're the small country at, at the like, tip of Africa, yeah. but then somehow competitive in like all these strange sports and first world type of activities. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, that, that like, yeah, as I said, it was introduction to a friend of mine. Um, but, but yeah, there's a, there's a, a, a small core strong group of guys, which, which keep, um, keep the whole competitive scene, scene going in South Africa, because it does, I mean, you've got to do, it's all under the, the FIPS Moosh international, like fly fishing competition rules. So right. like all our, all our interprovincial trials and national competitions are all done to the international standard rules. Uh, Cause ultimately our, our, our national team would then compete in international world's competition. So yeah. uh, who, who originally it was responsible for uh, getting that whole competitive side going. I can't, can't really say, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, they definitely are quite a, quite a, quite a good group of guys that keep that, that going. Yeah, that's awesome. It's really cool. Yeah. We've talked about competitive angling uh, with yeah. some Canadians, but never um, broad. So it's cool that you just hear, you know, the scene, how'd you get into um, to guiding then? How did that whole thing come about? Well, guiding, I, like, I think if you, if you fish enough um, and yeah, whether it's being involved with uh, the Cape Piscatorial Society um, or the competitive <laughs> scene, but generally like from competition fishing, you know, people generally get to know that you can, you can fish relatively well, so to speak. Um, and between like seniors and juniors, you spend a lot of time doing um, uh like coaching clinics for the younger guys. And so you just kind of get into that habit of like, not just fishing for yourself, but like helping other people out. Um, and then, yeah, I kind of went through kind of word of mouth and, Oh, this, the Cape Piscatorial Society. They also once a year do a, a, a river festival where they invite people to, to come for weekends and then guys, which, which know the rivers quite well, then, you know, make themselves available to, to do some guiding. So that's kind of something I was part of for like every year for quite a long time. Mm. Um, but I think it really sort of on the guiding side, it really started to, to kind of kick off was, yeah, in my, my twenties, um, uh, that's kind of when I decided, Oh, let me, let me actually give fly fishing as, as like an occupation, yeah. a good go. So at the time, uh, I joined up with uh, uh, old buddy John Yalen, who's kind of been around in the fly fishing scene in South Africa for many years. Uh, he's, um, yeah, he's one of the, guy, the go-to guys. He had 
upstream fly fishing originally in Cape Town when it when it first started many many uh, yeah it'll be decades now um, and yeah so his shop was in Cape Town and I joined up with him to to help manage and and run the fly fishing shop um, at which time he didn't do that much guiding but you know being a fly shop you often have people coming in to to ask for for guiding um, so that I then yeah from there I started like just building up building up the the guiding side of things um and yeah through doing the competitions and affiliated with western province fly fishing you then kind of have the the, the necessary sort of legitimacy to to guide guys um and then yeah just from from there over the years it just expanded on that more and more um and that's yeah that's kind of how it how it all started right on. cool would you would you say that um to, to most people, or maybe it's changed over the recent years, but like, would you say that you guide more freshwater or salt? Like, what is that demographic? Like, are people coming to Cape Town being like, like Yoma being like, I want to fish for rainbows or, <laughs> exactly. or are they seeking salt or has that changed? Maybe it started one way and then went the other way. Yeah, that's actually a very, very good question. Um, if I have a look historically, I by like definitely guided a lot more on on the the cape streams for for trout um and i'd say that's in large part because of the whole the whole setup and organization with the cape piscatorial society and having your beats book um right. but also it, it it ties in a lot better with people's itineraries um so often guys are down in cape town and they're like oh i've got a day off I got a day free in amongst my holiday or something. And I want to go for days, days fly fishing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the mountain streams in terms of like weather and the fish being there and actually, you know, taking a guys out for, for the day and getting them into fish. It's the most sort of reliable and consistent sort of right. body of water to, to target. Whereas, you know, when you come to, when it comes to the salt water side of things, um, you know, there's so many variables that often need to to come into play for for it to be a good day. And you know, in, even fishing myself, like if the tides are wrong and there's a low pressure and the weather conditions aren't right, doesn't matter if you're the best fly fisherman in the world. Like if the fish are not there, there on the bike. <laughs> yeah. And yep. you know, for 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 me, just like um like you know, keeping a a healthy conscious like so often i would have guys down here and they would have heard of like yellowtail or grunter or like a certain saltwater species and they would say like cool i'd love to go for a guided day on this but you know i, I, I personally i could never take somebody out for a day's guiding knowing that the chances are like really slim mm -hmm. of yeah. to catch a fish and it's you know it's it's a one day it's not like you know when i've be, been to like destinations um uh you know uh, international destinations say for instance you go to like alphonse for example and you're there for the week you you have the odd bad weather day but i mean that's like that's a fishery where the guides are on it every single day you've yeah. got multiple different species it's a, like a managed fishery so that's that's a, a much easier thing to to do and it's like a multiple day trip whereas just to pick a, a random day on the calendar when somebody ha happens to be yeah. uh, in Cape Town and they want to go out uh, fly fishing um, for some saltwater species it's quite a tricky thing to to do yeah. with any sort of consistency yeah because I mean you know my because I've never been I have images of like very you know South Africa being rugged waters filled with great white sharks <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. so uh i yeah is it uh i i can imagine it being challenging to just try and pick off a day you know yeah 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 but um, that so that being said i mean a lot of so it's on the salt water like it's it's kind of break you can break it into like two main sort of areas like our estuaries um which will be like mainly our, our, our at our river mouths where you've got your tidal system so you got the breeder river which is extremely um rich in fish life and it produces well and then there are a number of other small estuaries in 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 our areas um so it's the estuary fishing and then our sort of inshore and offshore fishing um and that would be going for like a uh, yellow yellow tail with which is like uh, scientifically it's Seriola lilandi, but it's the same, same species of fish you'll get in Australia or New Zealand that like they call them kingies over there. Right. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. yeah, that's something you can go and target um, 
uh, you know, with a pretty good consistency, you have to go out on, on a boat to go find them. Uh, you know, so the clients needs to be able to bomb a pretty decent cast with a nine or 10 weight off, off the boat. <laughs> but um, that's, that's the type of thing that I've, I've taken quite a few local clients. So guys, which are like based in Cape town that are keen to go and catch a yellowtail on fly. Um, you do have a bit more freedom to say, okay, cool. I know you amped on, on going to get these guys. Let's keep in comms. I'll keep an eye on the weather and mm-hmm. the water temperature and, you know, when the fish should be there. Um, and then, you know, generally their, their sort of timing is a bit more flexible. Um, and yeah, occasionally you have a client who's down and it just so happens that the two days he has free, that one of those days, like the stars align and things are, 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 are good yeah. <laughs> to go out on the boat and get yellow tail. Um, but yeah, as, I mean, in terms of what, what we actually call good sea days, um, you know, in summer now, uh, we fish off Cape Point for Yellowtail, and like our prevailing wind is the howling southeaster, which I'm looking at up my window. I can see their white horses on the ocean. Like you don't want to launch a boat in this. Yeah, um, right, right, yeah. Uh, like at the moment, I was looking tomorrow was potentially like the weather was going to change to southwest and the wind was going to drop. So it's like you got to a find days where the weather conditions are are, are okay for, for going out um, and not necessarily just for yourself but if you're taking a client as well um, and then also the fish need to be there like if the wind blows for too long then you get up willing and then the water goes cold so you need it to blow to bring the warm water in which brings the fish in but then it's got to like die down so that it's nice to go out so as i said in the beginning they're quite a lot more variable like to make it consistent <laughs> it's almost like a this goldilocks scenario right it's like yeah, not too, yeah. you need wind yeah. but not too much wind <laughs> you need yeah. sun yeah. but not a whole lot of sun yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah the yellow yellow um yeah. yellow tail like those images that you sent uh i'm just flipping through the images you sent to see those yellow tail look buck wild <laughs> there's a few yeah. here that are yeah they look super fun yeah, they're, How they're, close I mean, they're phenomenal fish to 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 catch on on fly. Um, yeah, they're just super, super strong fish, and you often find them like in in like feeding frenzies on the surface, like mm. on on bait balls. So it can be be very visual, but things just happen quite quickly. Um, so you got to yeah be ready. Like, I mean, targeting you got to have that line stripped out in your stripping baskets, and like when you get onto the fish, you got to make a cast straight away. You can't be like stripping your line out <laughs> and then getting rid of then they've like gone down again yeah um, right and then yeah like so when you're out there like in 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 recent years we've had quite a like prolific amount of um atlantic bonito um which you kind of get them all all around the world um yeah. and they're also very cool to target on fly um super strong uh they, yeah they're very cool obviously the the yellowtail is more your your main target species but those are right. pretty pretty rad fish to target as well uh, i've got uh, the cape snook it almost looks very similar to barracuda um which which we get in yeah and it's like probably uh, a good six seven years ago there were a lot more of them around um like off cape point they they kind of at random times seem to, to pull in, but not nearly as much as, as we used to have them. And then, yeah, the tuna species are, are always, always fun to, to target that you got to go a little bit further offshore. Um, believe it or not, guys to, for some reason, have a, a an, an urge to, to target big yellowfin tuna on fly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is actually it's, it's 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 a very doable thing again you got to get the, the you know the weather conditions right and right. like you need to have like the fish feeding you know close to the surface and you kind of yeah it's it's yeah i've got kind of mixed feelings on it i think the the, the big feat when it comes to uh, like going for a yellowfin tuna between 50 to 100 kilos on fly like the real <laughs> challenge is like whether you can hold out for the hour and a half to two hour fight that you're going to be dealing with. Yeah. Um, right. Once, once you're in the area and you got them like coming around the boats, like to get them to eat a fly is not, not in like a, a massive challenge. It's once you got that thing hooked. Yeah, there, uh, there. That's it. Yeah. For the 15, 16 weights, um, you know, the rod can handle it. Uh, the line can handle it. You, I mean, you, you fish a like massive one more thick leader. Um, but what really gets you is those fish can take like 
good half a kilometer of line straight down. And although you're using this massive, like, 15 weight large arbor reel it's always a one-to-one -one ratio when you're reeling it in <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> right yeah. yeah it's a slow <laughs> go <laughs> the the usual uh, response after somebody lands like a big elephant on fly is like well that's awesome i've ticked it off my list I'm never gonna do that again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because yeah it's just like it's quite a quite a physically demanding thing but right. um yeah but uh, yeah long fin tuna when they're around they're quite fun fish are 12 weights you get them like anything from 10 to to like 30 kilos though so those are more fun you can catch a few more fish um so yeah it all all depends on you know what 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 one's kind of looking for uh, yeah. but I, I would say in terms of like, if you want to get a good saltwater experience, um, uh, on the fly fishing side down in Western Cape waters, the best thing to do would be to like book a multiple day trip, like a four day trip on the right tides at somewhere like the, the Breda. There's quite a few places and, you know, organized with the guy. I know the guys at, at upstream, um, they, they organize trips up there quite a bit. And, and then, yeah, then you, you've got a few days and, you know, fishing on an estuary there, you got a nice, pushing tide um when the fish should be like moving up to mud banks and it's it's a lot uh, more how should i say similar or what's kind of expected in, in terms of saltwater fly fishing compared to what people do around the world so if you, you imagine going for redfish on the flats like yeah. finding tailing fish that's very similar to finding tailing tailing grunter um, okay only gr grunter eats more selectively like a permit <laughs> but behave like a red in there like going so he's oh, okay. like one of our early grail species but in yeah in the last couple of years we figured out quite a few um tricks to to get them to eat and yeah it's more visual you see tailing fish and uh yeah, so you got your options at uh, fishing for your leery those garrick um sort oh, of that's what the species and yeah it's just you've, you've actually got a nice tidal movement and banks and things to to work with and narrow it down um so yeah, that 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 would probably be be the best to, yes. to like do a couple of days. So yeah, if you guys are ever coming back down, let oh, us yeah. know oh, and yeah. uh, you know ahead of time have a look at the tidal times and yeah, mm. try and get a few days out of Cape Town and and up totally. on estuary. Totally. Yeah, days. that's that's what the Instagram we were talking about this before you got on. Um, it's called Grunter. That's the fish. We're like that looks like a drum of something of some sort, but yeah. Yeah, it. it's got a big head on it, big mouth, like it's just like this elongated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they are they phenomenal fish to to right. to target. Like um, they and they do. It's, it's very visual. Those they 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 come up and they they actually tail on the mud flats. Right. So you'll see their tails in the water, like like any tailing fish in the shallows. Right. There's like right. the mud prawns in the in the mud flats, and they basically put their nose on their holes and try and blow them out to dislodge them so, <laughs> yeah, so to, like wade slowly on the mud flats try and spot those tailing fish and then present a, a fly to them um and yes yeah, so they and they, they they grow to a decent size um uh you fish anything from like a seven to to nine weight um nice. and so, yeah they give you a beautiful fight um and yeah beautiful fish as well um yeah right up there uh, guys, that's kind of like the permit of of South Africa. Guys always like refer it to the Holy, Holy Grail of South African uh, saltwater fly fishing. Right, um, super, super selective. Yeah. Spooky. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, like the amount yeah. of like fly fishing yeah. opportunities you have, like close to home. I mean, like you're talking about amazing saltwater fishing, and then you've got you know amazing rainbow trout fishing. You've got kind of both best of both worlds. It's like South Africa, Cape Town's like a fly fishing heaven. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's an awesome place to get the, the best of both worlds. And yeah, I suppose like anywhere in the world, like conditions do play, play into effect. And it kind of, if you live here, I've grown up here, then, then you're kind of in key with, with uh, you know, what the are and then you can, can capitalize on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we obviously speaking about Cape Town, but I suppose I've got to um, be kind of a, a spokesman for South Africa in general. Um, <laughs> but uh 
you know, we, if you like down here, we, we, I mean, we've got some still waters, um, but like still waters in, in the Western Cape is not our like sort of stronghold. It's our Cape streams, which is um, yeah. uh, really a, a great thing. Uh, but if you go up country, you've got uh, KwaZulu Natal um, and that province, they've got the whole Underberg Mountains, which is close to the Sutu. And there they have some phenomenal still waters. So oh, wow. like they. Mm. You can go and catch like really nice double digit rainbow trout. Um, it's just the, <clears throat> yeah, the, the setup there, it's, it's, it's like as you move uh, more inland, past like the Midlands, you get to it's like a higher altitude and they got so many bodies of water, just like still water dams, like all over the place. Yeah. And just like the nature of where it is, it just allows for um, like really good weed bed growth, which then in turn results in like really good food for, for the trout. So, yeah. You know, if one is in South Africa, um, you know, other than Cape Town, like KwaZulu Natal's got some amazing trout fishing, and they've got some beautiful rivers, yeah. um, uh, and have both uh, brown trout and rainbow trout up there. So, yeah, if, if one's ever oh. traveling to South Africa and has the opportunity to go to uh, KZN province, they they also got some some really good fly fishing there. Um, and then, yeah, something which I, I didn't really mention uh, before, but I mean, uh, yellowfish. Uh, I'm sure you've seen yellowfish, largemouth yellowfish, uh, smallmouth yellowfish. There's actually, I think, 11 or 12 different species. I was going to ask about yeah. um, But though they, they have become like a very desirable uh, species of fish to, to target um, quite a few of the sort of uh, like, uh, how should I say, big guiding yeah. Uh, operators that have destinations like internationally they they now also have like specific um trips to go for yellowfish like yellowfish drifts like i think african waters has got um a really good one uh, that was like tourette fly yeah. fishing they do quite a trips african waters has got a really good good trip i think mob Ghana does a trip even the upstream guys do a trip but uh that's all on the on the orange river um which is kind of a border river between South Africa and Namibia. That's where you're going to get your smallmouth and largemouth yellowfish. Yeah. But then the, the Vaal River, which uh, goes through Johannesburg. So even though Johannesburg is like kind of our, our like more inland, very like city city orientated um, part of South Africa, mm -hmm. uh, they do have the Vaal River, which has smallmouth and largemouth yellowfish. So that's oh. that's again, if ever somebody's traveling to South Africa. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're looking to go and do some fly fishing. You can go for for yellowfish. And are those guys kind of like carp in a way? I mean, they look kind of carpy. Is it is it sort of similar fishing? Yeah, to to a degree. Yeah. Um, so they they're in the barbus family. Uh, so uh, they they obviously got the little little barbs. They actually very closely related to uh, what's that other fish? I think they get. Up in like the Himalayas, a Shamir, the Golden Shamir, okay. or something. I know Jeff Courier, he made quite a effort to go and go, go and catch them. But right. so it's yeah, it's a barber species. But um, yeah, a lot of guys would like yeah, not not enjoy like them being compared to carp because carp is like a lot more of a like sluggish like right. mud eater. Which like your yellowfish are are like although they look similar, they're a lot more like elongated right. and much stronger stronger fighting fish oh, okay. um it's like, like a have, it's like a fall yeah. fish yeah like a fall fish maybe fall or fish or a white fit or like a white fish white yeah. fish yeah 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 but yeah yeah, yeah. White it's, fish, it was yeah. strange strange that you mentioned white fish there's another fish that we get to, uh, indigenous species called the vitfus which is afrikaans for white fish it's and it's also closely related to 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 the yellow fish yeah. um okay. being the barber species please like if there are any uh, ichthyologists listening and I misquote some of the names, like this is my little disclaimer. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but yeah, they, 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 they are like very similar to that species. So that's my, that's my pooch in the background. <laughs> <all good>. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, just coming back to, so like the large mouth yellow fish, like yeah. that guy, like if you go targeting him, you, you fishing like big streamer, patterns and bait fish wow. patterns they, they're like they hunt like pretty aggressive prey. yeah so you're going to be fishing like a seven eight weight stripping a, like oh, wow. a bait fish pattern for them and they'll they'll explode on your fly oh, wow. um 
But yeah, as I said, there's like 11 like recognized species. There may be more, but 11 that I know of, of the, 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 the yellowfish species. I know in KZN, they've got like the small scale, the large scale. And then there's like, there's one species which we get down here in the Western Cape which is is called the clan william yellowfish and okay. for a lot of guys that's like the toughest one to to tick off the list um that's just because like where you find them is like we've got a a stretch of mountains like the cedarberg mountain range um mm -hmm. which is a few hours out of cape town um and you're often having to like hike and find these like small like the clan william is like where they're known from because you've got the Olifant River, which comes in, flows into the Clan William uh, Dam and catchment area. Yeah. And so you do find them there, but like over the years, there are less and less of them further down and you're finding them more in the, all the higher up tributaries. So often it's like really far off the beaten track to go and find a, a good one of these, these Clan William yellows, which, I mean, they can grow to in excess of 20 pounds. Oh, um, so, yeah often the guys refer to them as like a slab of gold because they the clan williams are like beautiful beautiful colors yeah. but um but yeah there's no sort of uh guiding operation for for that i think even for for anybody like down here in cape town that that fishes a lot to to tick that species off the list is, yeah. is quite a big thing and that's a um, native species yeah yeah indigenous yeah. Or, indigenous or yeah. yeah yeah very cool uh, yeah, it's a kit. It's a very cool fish, um, and yeah, as I said, fish them like big streamer patterns, bait fish patterns, the smallmouth yellowfish, which grow big and will take streamer patterns. Um, that's, I mean, it, like to go and do uh, like a, a trip to 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 the Orange River, um, especially for like beginner fly fishermen. Like if you go and you just check them in in the rapids, you don't even need to be able to cast far. It's literally like you know, you've got a bit of lead, a bit of fly line out and a bit of leader and you just check them thing yeah. in the, in the rapids. Like you will catch a good number of smallmouth yellowfish. And mm. like, I believe that's, that's been like responsible for a lot of, a lot of people getting into fly fishing. Wow. It's, it's like a yellowfish trip. And okay. you know, nice. the, yeah, let's face it. When that's you catch fish, that's what kind of gets you into it. Um, yeah. Not every Positive reinforcement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been seeing tons, yeah. tons of pictures of yellowfish. It's funny. I mean, I'm sure it's like, it's a huge sport. I'm just like, oh, it looks like a carp. Is it like a carp? It's like, no, it's not like a carp. But uh, I've been seeing people fish them, and it, they look really cool. And I mean, you know, as another target species um, in South Africa, like, geez, there's a lot of lot of species. A lot of species. Oh my god, yeah. The large uh, looks like they're huge. Like I'm, I'm looking at photos here. It just looks like you know, yeah, it's crazy. Massive over 30 inch fish. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you, they, they get. They get big. I think, yeah, for a lot of guys, they're always pushing to get fish over the 20 pound mark, um, which <laughs> they do get. And yeah, no, amazing fighting fish. And yeah, they, as I said, in, in recent years, they, they're becoming more documented and like a lot more like respected as like a, a valuable target species on, on fly. Um, right. Like, right. I think you know, when when you guys were down, you guys mentioned you do follow the the Mission Fly Mag guys, which yeah. are also based down here in Cape Town. It's um, like Tudor and Conrad and the guys. They do like a really good job of like showcasing some of the stuff that that we do down here. Yeah. Um, but I believe they they I've seen they've got quite a few quite, uh, cool articles um, on on yellowfish and and largemouth yellowfish and the flies for them. Yeah. But yeah, they, the, it's definitely a fish that's got a bit more uh, positive publicity and and in yeah in the recent years. That's cool. It's super cool looking fish. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's really really neat. So, yeah, I've been I've had it. Okay, wait. This is just a personal selfish question. I've been it's been driving me, it's been driving me crazy. Um, the Afrikaans word for the area that we were at. I keep trying to pronounce it, but I can't say say okay, it properly. So, uh, <laughs> let's okay. So the the that that like mountain range yeah okay that we were in so like if you want to refer to the mountains that those rivers were in it's called the limitberg limitberg so, okay limitberg uh but then the the river that we were on uh we call it the the small blau the small okay. blau um okay. The the valley specifically that we were in is called uh, the Toitzkloof. So that's the one. Valley. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so yeah. Just that? to give 
I can give you, yeah, this has actually got a bit bit more history and interesting story. Um, so the, the Toys Kloof, uh, the Kloof is the valley part. The, to, the Toy is actually, it's quite a, a regular surname in South Africa. Um, and essentially like where it comes from, like in the South African constituencies, I mean, we've got a whole like mixed, like English speaking, Afrikaans speaking, Kosa, Zulu, like there's a whole mix, but on the Afrikaans, yeah. Um, there's like a group which they refer to as like the French Huguenots. Um, so their roots are originally like with people that came over from France. And then right. over time, they became like the French Huguenots. So just before we got to the streams, um, before we went to the tunnel, there was a little town called Franchoc, which translated as like French Corner, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So that's like, they even have a Bastille Day once a year, like in commemoration. Oh, wow. of <laughs> So, so what's, what kind of happened over the years is you had a lot of these sort of French names, which then kind of evolved into like Afrikaans names. So De Toy is like quite a well-known Afrikaans surname um, that's like would have originated from like a French De Toi or something along those lines. Um, and yeah, so you find like a lot of, a lot of <laughs> integration from this like French Huguenot heritage in, in some of the names. Um, Right. So, yeah, that's kind of just a bit of background. So it's like French Huguenot Afrikaans would have been a surname of somebody in the area. I don't know who Mr. Dutoy was originally. Um, yeah. But, yeah, that's that's the actual that's cool. valley that, 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 uh, that river runs through. Um, and then, yeah, I suppose the last one is that river that we were on, the Small Blau. There's, uh, I think, yeah, Fishing Beach 6, like, right towards the beginning of the beat at one point there would have been like a tributary coming coming in um and that little river is the elands putt which is like yeah. afrikaans and elands like a type of buck or antelope um and putt means path so it's like antelope path okay yeah that yeah, river man yeah that, i remember i was just like you know you were talking about um, remembering some of the fish we caught, and I think about a lot of the, a lot. I think about that pool at the end of kind of the where we were fishing, where you're like, yeah, if the fishing's slow, it can usually like really rely on this pool because it's just like, well, just just cast out there, and it was just like every single cat. It was like this deep pool with this like kind of rocky um, channel, and you're just like every single cast. It was like another trout, and you're like, just get them out quick because you want to spook the pool. And we sat there for like yeah. I don't know, like an hour, just like trout, yeah. trout, 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 yeah. Yeah. on the rab fly, right? Yeah, yeah. The 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 corrective, uh, well, not the corrective, the, the socially acceptable term for the fly back in the old school days, the the rough and boisterous, uh, but actually <laughs> it's the red ass bastard. But, uh, back red then, used the word bastard in fly fishing publications. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the good old South African special rab. And I yeah, I, I know I remember clearly exactly what you're talking about that. Um, that spot they got the big rock yeah. flows in and it's it's just it's like a really deep section um but and it's high up so there's like cool water but like if you can remember it's a quite shady uh, quite a lot of trees around so yeah, yeah. Uh, there's the, the fish they got fast moving water they got deep cool water so they kind of like regardless of conditions are, are always always a good number of fish there and they're always kind of ready to feed yeah. so yeah i do remember you can like, <laughs> just get that one out don't speak the rest <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly you guys caught yeah. a ton of fish yeah, yeah. It was great. You caught a ton yeah. of fish and it was that fly you know the the red ass bastard like what what is it about that i know we talked a little bit about it and it's like who knows but can you can you talk a little bit about kind of the that fly and why it's it's so why it works so well because it's just a kind of nondescript dry you know yeah, I mean, so like if, just to, to, to get into to mm -hmm. the fly, I should just mention a bit more about the, the yeah. sort of feeding habits of the trout on, on the stream. So like, you know, in a lot of, lot of places like that have like high nutrient rivers, um, you land up having like one specific uh, like type of food source that there's a hell of a lot of. So, and then you have like a very specific hatch and they feed like selectively on on something so our our rivers um uh like with the water being leached through the mountains like it's super clear but they, there's not like a huge amount of nutrients in the water so they rely quite a lot on um on like various different food sources so that, i mean our fish will eat hopper hoppers like 
anything. So generally a good presented dryer, whether it be a mayfly pattern, whether it be a, um, a caddis fly pattern or even a hopper pattern, mm -hmm. um, you, you're generally going to get some eats. But that being said, as you witnessed, like the rab, that fly seems to just generate way more eats than, than others. Um, and essentially, like if you have a look at it, it's, uh, it's essentially imitating like a beige colored mayfly. I can't give you the exact mayfly Mm -hmm. variant but like it's and so that sort of size is um is is one of their they're frequently fed upon like flies or mayflies that are going to be in the area um but i think yeah it's the size the color but the whole thing about a, 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 a like if you look at a rab it's if you have a look at a lot of like cat skill dry flies they're very like tight and neat presenting this little fly whereas this way it's got like a little bit of squirrel tail in it it creates quite a buggy profile on the water and it sits really nice on, on the water. So I, I think for, for me, maybe it's just that bugginess that's, yeah. that mm -hmm. kind of gets them more interested, the way it sits nicely on the water. Um, we've got like a, 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 what we call a pararab, which is a parachute <laughs> uh, variant of the rab. But it's like, again, it's like, although it's, you know, the hackles wrapped around a parachute, it's not this like tight, this tight little, uh, you know, special whitings, like hackle feather, like super tight. It's like this yeah. buggy, messy mm -hmm. looking fly. So I think, yeah, I, you know, I, I, it's, it's something which so many people would have like spoken about or, or written about in terms of trying to attribute why it's such a successful mm -hmm. fly. Um, but in my personal opinion um, is the bugginess. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. got this like bugginess with it about it. Sure. Um, sits on the water nicely and yeah does does the job sometimes flies are just like that there's yeah. they're just they've the design just for whatever reason hit hit all the right notes and you don't really know can't attribute yeah. it to one or yeah one thing or the other it just it is what works yeah it, uh, i suppose uh if you look at a willy bugger um yeah why does a willy bugger work so so well um and i've heard a lot of people say like a willy bugger like looks like a lot of things, but nothing specific. You know, it can be a so it's like same there. It's like just this bugginess aspect, or in that you get a willy bugger. It kind of, I don't know, plays on whatever instincts the the trout needs to <laughs> to make him want to eat. For sure. Um, and yeah, but that's that that rab like. It, if one does some 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 more research, you know, I'm not a I'm by no means like a. Uh, a specialist when it comes to you know the the history of the the rab um, yeah, yeah. but there there is quite a bit of literature literature on it um but uh yeah if, if you don't have a rab in your box when you're fishing the cape streams you know, you, <laughs> you're in trouble <laughs> you're missing, yeah. Missing yeah. <laughs> yeah fair we'll we'll put a link because I, I read an article about uh, the rab after that trip i'll put a link to that in the show notes people can check it out super cool it was just yeah. it was crazy the fish were just going nuts for you you know like it was it was really yeah. cool um yeah. mitchy's fishies five i think mitchy's fishies five Definitely. Uh, yeah uh richard we ask um every guest on the show the same five questions at the end of the show and they're just five more questions but they're kind of just broadly about you know fly fishing your fly fishing life um so i'm going to ask you them now uh this first one might be kind of hard i know we've been talking about all these different species but um what is your favorite fish to target and why like do you have a like if you had to pick a favorite fish to go after what would it be okay um can I can I like break it into like a local fish and an international fish? Totally, that that's cool. Yeah, because you fished um, you fished in some ridiculous places, but yeah, that's totally cool. Okay, yeah. so like I, I'm probably gonna lean. Yeah, I'll definitely lean towards saltwater. It's just like I I, I love trout, like uh, from sure. a freshwater species. Um, but yeah, if if I'm gonna have to, if I got one fish to target, it's probably gonna be a saltwater fish, just because it's you know uh, you know. That's that's just me, yeah. but like internationally, in terms of like flat species, like I've had the privilege of of, of getting permit and and bonefish and and various species. But for me, a triggerfish is like yeah. If if I could go and spend a day fishing for triggerfish, um, yeah, just the the interaction you have with the fish is is amazing. Um, uh, yeah, I mean the best triggerfish destination I've been to was there at the New Nubian Flats, yeah. um, 
just the the sheer like volume of them that are there and there's no real heavy tidal movement uh, on those atolls so you can kind of fish for them all day wow. um but i mean i've seen them in bassist india at that atoll we had them at alphonse and that's also alphonse amazing fishery for for triggers but just the mm. the whole it's it's very visual you see them tailing and you just you have this whole sort of interaction with the fish when you present your fly you like watch them like come over and have a look at it and they've got this like weird attitude like they don't really like a gt you can come up to them and they'll be like what the hell are you doing here? like you know, they, <laughs> they, got, they got the whole own thing going on yeah but they look like something that like picasso threw together and totally. put into a fish um and yeah it's like the only fish that i've had scrutinize a fly like that like he turns on his side and they they can move their eyes like a chameleon like both oh, independently weird it actually like wow. Turns his eye, yeah. He turns his whole body sideways so he can like inspect the fly with his like one eye, and he's like <laughs> looking there for. But like once he makes his decision that he wants to eat it, he just like reverses like a little like yeah. I don't know like little not file or less aggressive dog, and he just like pins this thing. Oh man! And yeah, and that's like the first part of it. Now you've like got him to eat. Now you got to like wait and like set. It's oh. a, such a weird set. It's not like straight away. It's like now he's pinned it if you pull too soon and probably not going to get a hookup so you got to let it like slowly tension up and only once you like actually feel them on the end then you can set the oh, hook man. properly um so after yeah then you got the hook set and then landing him is like another story because like he can bite a hook clean in half he can bite the line off and he can cut you off in the coral he can swim into a cave yeah. where you swear there's nothing that he could get into somehow he does it so yeah just that sure. whole interaction from presenting the fly to getting the eat to setting the hook to landing the fish it's just it just yeah it's such a amazing like interaction with the fish so yeah, yeah wow. in terms of the flat species boom trigger fish right yeah. up boom. and they fight they fight bloody hard they're like these little like rugby balls and they kind of get <laughs> a tail and dorsal fin moving all in the same direction so um that's like one massive pump so yeah that's yeah they do look they're, they're very unique very strange looking fish picasso painting is such a good way of putting it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Cubist yeah. Fish. no i can't i actually i can't like uh, take credit for the term because there actually is a species of trigger fish called the picasso oh yeah trigger go. fish oh that's awesome. yeah. <laughs> one of the one of the smaller species but um but yeah like it that's definitely it just looks like this mangle jangle of interesting <laughs> colors and <laughs> totally yeah. And shapes yeah but they, but they are like a little ball yeah that's wild ball man. Fish. so like yeah that. so that would be on on like a, a flat species yep um and then she's so hard to to narrow it down. Uh, I suppose I go through like st stages. If I've been fishing for one, then I miss the other one. Like I was away now on a family holiday. I put the bread and had had a chance to go and have an afternoon targeting grunter. And I mean, nice. they are like in terms of a sight fishing fish, like right up there. Yeah. Um, but then uh, my yellowtail and my garrick are like my my main like. Uh, sort of game for species which are going to give me the biggest pull and it's a nice fast chase so mm. oh it's hard to 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 put down one uh i'll probably yeah let me put it i'll, I'll leave it at, at a at a spotted grunter for now in okay. terms of like okay. <laughs> that's great man i um, love it uh, no problem love it. Uh, yeah so, yeah cool wicked um awesome answer yeah trigger fish look wicked got it oh my god gotta check that out um, okay. Number two. And, and like I said, you fished in a ton of different spots in the world. Uh, you know, like, geez, you've fished in amazing places, Jurassic Lake, you know, you've been on the Nubian flats, you're talking about Zambezi, like ridiculous places. Um, if you could fish <laughs> anywhere in the world right now, assuming it's the best time of year to go, where would you go and why anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, uh, I would go and target golden Dorado in Bolivia nice nice yeah that's a good answer okay. <laughs> yeah it's just i uh, like they uh i haven't i haven't targeted targeted them and i know like you know that you can get them in brazil and the yeah. pantanal there's, there's a few places to go and target them yeah. um but just the setup they have in in bolivia like right up in the jungle and you're fishing like a freestone river so it's like if you can imagine like the river we fished in for for trout yeah and the cape streams like now you get make that river like a little bit bigger but yeah. still crystal clear water and fish holding in a river 
like a trout would, although they're eating sabalo, which are like bait fish, and they grow really big. They're extremely aggressive. They jump, but you still like fishing in like a trout stream environment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And obviously you're in this like remote section of the jungle, um, which, yeah, like obviously the, the more remote for me and the more closer like to nature that it is now, like it used to be a long time ago. Um, yeah, that's, that makes it special. So yeah, without a doubt, if I could jump in a plane and go and go for a trip, it would be, yeah, Golden Dorado in Bolivia. Nice. Uh, without, I'm with you there, man. A hundred percent. God, they're so cool. Like top of the list. Golden. We should do a trip together. We'll go. Better. We'll all fly to Bolivia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, be, well, let's get through this whole COVID scenario. Yeah, first. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Get the um, number three of Mitchie's Fishies 5 is uh, what is one of your favorite or best fishing memories? One of your favorite fishing memories. Of which there Ooh. are probably many. <laughs> I imagine. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there, there are lots of, lots, lots of memories. Um, but uh, yeah, I suppose let me like I'll, I'll just yeah you can go back like you know, I've got a, 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 a son who's eight year old son and like his first first trout like on fly was obviously a very special moment. Um, I've shared some special fish with friends and and clients, but uh, I think let me let me simplify it and say like uh, like best fly fishing memory and like most recent one because yeah. that's like what's fresh in my mind at the moment yeah. is that that recent fish I, I i posted on instagram which is that nice 71 centimeter grunter yeah. um mm. that, that was that was now this this last um this last holiday and as i said like these days mm. i spend more time fishing with friends and family i'm only really you know guide like occasionally just to to keep the passion going and not make it too commercial because i've had my my long stint in that side of the game um and that fish was kind of the last day that i was up on holiday um at our family spot and the tides had kind of been all wrong the whole the whole time so i hadn't really fly fished and just that last afternoon i was like cool my my cousin and my cousin's younger son they were really keen to to go for a fish and they don't fish that much so I was like cool let me I'll take you guys and we'll go do some fishing and um, there was more so on the conventional fishing side of things like fishing with real prawn baits and yeah. and yeah just the conditions like all of a sudden we're we're right with the tides and saw these tailing fish and yeah it was great like because you can spend hours and days targeting a grunter and things just don't work out and yeah, yeah i literally saw the fish i had my seven weight with me uh one fly <laughs> tied it on took a walk fish tailed away i'd really stripped line out and yeah it was probably about a 20 25 meter distance oh my God. Class, bombed the cast landed like a meter past it and a meter to the right which is generally kind of where you want it and yeah. like pitched the fly and it like boiled on it didn't get a hook up i was like oh waited two seconds twitched it again and then the thing just exploded on on awesome. the water wow and yeah it was as as good a, if not one of the best fights and eats i've ever had from a grunter yeah. um but it was just a with my with my cousin who's like not a big fly fisherman or fisherman uh and it's like essentially my second cousin my cousin's uh, son yeah. um and yeah, it was just a, like a real wholesome moment, you know, like yeah. a lot of the time when you're guiding or on a trip, it's like, that's what you're doing and you expect it. Whereas like, yeah. for me, that was kind of just like fly fishing, you know, moments in its purity, no expectations, things just were there and it just happened and it was, yeah, beautiful. So yeah, that's, that's what I'll throw out there is uh, great, one man. of my favorite memories and also because it's very, very recent. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. Wow. It's good. It's Jeez. good. <laughs> grunters man i gotta yeah i want to pitch for grunters yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they look they look Next so cool up. it's so cool yeah. yeah um number four of mitch's fishies five is why do you fly fish what do you get out of fly fishing what do you love about it oh well, i get a hell of a lot from from fly fishing um but i mean fly fishing inevitably is gonna you're gonna put me close to the water um, whether it's in the ocean or the rivers and i think um for me like that's that's something i really need for like 
uh, I suppose there you want to say like on a spiritual level or, or whatever, just that connection with the water. If I, if I, if I don't go fishing, um, for, for, for a long period of time, like I, like, I, I like crave it. I need it. And yeah. yeah, or like when, even if I catch no fish or even if it's like a tough day's fishing, like I'm always a better person and feel better for, for, for things after having been on the water and fly fishing. Um, so like just on a sort of like emotional psychological level, like just being on the water and, and fishing is like, that's a huge thing that I get from, from fly fishing. Um, but I also, I do, I do love just the, the, the immersing myself in everything that's happening with the body of water, with the fish, with myself, with the tackle as well, like, and the fly, you know, going to target a fish where you think he might be because he should be there having tied a fly that should imitate what he's going to eat uh, with the right gear that you, you know, taking down. And then it like all comes together. Like for that one moment, it's like all your stuff and then all the fish's stuff and like the environment stuff is like all connected at that point in time. And you're like, I don't know, you just feel like a part of it, a part of something bigger and, totally. and cooler. And, uh, and yeah, I love the feeling of a, a fish eating my fly and yeah. like getting the hook and, and having the fight. Um, and yeah, getting that interaction with, with fish and yeah, just getting, getting out there. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful way to, to get out into, to nature. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. This summer. Oh my God. Can't wait. I'm so jealous. I, know. I hate seeing every time I don't know, uh, you know, our audience can't see this, but every time you flick it, like the light shines definitely see blue sky and sun i'm just like what the <laughs> fuck is that i was gonna say the same thing like you've got like fluff, fluffy white clouds on a blue sky behind you and i'm looking at it like it's like snowing, uh, it's like snowing. literally gray yeah. it's snowing and it's gray yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well i hope for you guys that yeah weather comes around nice yeah, and soon you can get yeah. in get some it's just kind of like very drab today so seeing your sunny sky is just pretty funny (laughs) yeah it looks shitty (laughs) (laughs) um okay number five the mitchie's fishies five is um if you were a fly pattern existing or made up uh what would you be like what fly pattern best represents you and why if you were a fly what would you be Oh, weird. that is a, it's that's the weirdest a good one. question. It's, just, it's not like a, a typical, I've never, never seen that one before. <laughs> heard it, like, heard that. Um, that is a very interesting question. Uh, oh, let me, let me think about for it. Sure. Yeah. For uh, sure. I mean, it's it's fun. Some people answer because they're like, Oh, I kind of look like this fly. And some people are like, yeah. Oh, this fly is kind of like my personality. So yeah. it's like, there's just yeah. a lot of ways to tackle yeah, yeah. this. Like uh, Yilma's a club sandwich. Yeah, or 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 a red ass <laughs> bastard, or a red ass bastard for sure. It's a noble ant. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's Yelma for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I love the Chernobyl. Yeah, no, they 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 work. I think uh, again, I'm gonna try and like mix it, yeah. mix it up. Um, so I think like I would would go for a, a salt water pattern, um, yeah. just because like yeah. In, in, in general, like for me, if I think about like freshwater dry fly patterns, they like very tight and neat and specific, whereas I think I'm, you know, a bit more free flowing. It's a lot about just being on the water. So yeah. I, I, I would start you know, like leaning yeah, towards like a, a, like a streamer, streamer type of pattern. Um, just, uh, I, I suppose, yeah, like a streamer or bait fish pattern. I don't think I can like, specifically say like yeah this type of streamer or this type of yeah. like bait fish pattern but i think like you know a streamer uh yeah it can can be fished in all sort of scenarios like in in salt water and fresh water um and yeah i think that's kind of like my my fishing side of things i like to fish in all different types of water yeah. um a brackish yeah, fly. personality wise I'd like yeah uh, I try to be open to, to various things and yeah, like to flow through them. So yeah, I would say definitely a, yeah, a sort of a, a streamer, streamer pattern. Saltwater streamer right. pattern. I can dig it. Just like a nice yeah, bait fish. Or, yeah. Or a streamer pattern. Like for, actually for that matter, I might as well just say a flash clouser. Like, there we go. <laughs> nice. Right on. Because like, like a flash clouser for me. I mean, a clouser is actually yeah. I'll I'll go I'll go for a clouser. 
uh, like definitely. It. Can I cha- change that up? And yeah. more specifically, like a little flash clouser because it's like, you know, it's like it's a quite a, a sparsely tied clouser. You can strip that thing and a trout will chow it where it doesn't want to chow anything else. And I've seen it. Yeah. Um, but I can, like, I've caught, believe it or not, caught grunter on clousers, which like yeah. aren't really a clouser pattern. I know mates which have caught like permits on like a clouser variation, yeah. uh, like a, a Charlie clouser hybrid. I've caught big fish, small fish, everything. Um, yeah, so I'll I'll go with a like a little flash clouser. Yeah, there you go. Sure. Great answer, yeah. man. I love it. It's a yeah. great fly. Can't go wrong with that fly yeah. at all. Nope. Yeah. I Richard. should have thought of that straight off the bat. <laughs> yeah, man. I love that. No, I, hey, sometimes it takes a bit of time, you know, to think about it. It's a kind of a weird question, so that's totally fair. Um, get your mind going yeah, man. around thing, you know, start thinking of patterns. Dude, it's been good. Yeah. You know, it's been good chatting. Like, thank you so much for coming on the show and, and hanging out. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. It's been, yeah. It's been a blast. Yeah. Thanks for taking these guys out when you did. Absolutely, man. Yeah, it's a great yeah, story sorry. now. Great to, to see uh, see you guys in, in person again. As totally. I said, definitely remember remember like every aspect of that day. Um, I think it's just because you guys were like so rad to to spend mm-hmm. the day on the water with because like you kind of appreciate it for everything that it is. Um, yeah, so, oh, man, yeah, man. It was definitely. Wild. Definitely keep in touch, and yeah, my, you're always welcome to give me a shout when you this side of the world and we'll organize a day's fishing. We will. Um, hopefully, hope Aldo can join next time. Yeah, I'm not, well. missing oh, yeah. Next, no, I'm not missing no. out next time. He'll be there. And then we'll fly over to the Seychelles right after. You know, yeah. it'll just be a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're I mean, paying though. Bolivia, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I say you can go to Bolivia after after that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do, do the whole night. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's from my side, great to, to catch up with you guys. Yep. And uh, I must say thanks for um, for giving me the opportunity to have a, a catch up and kind of just uh, represent South Africa a little bit and let the people know around the world what's what's happening down this side. And yeah, yeah. thanks mm-hmm. to you, you guys for your podcast and what you, you guys do for, for fly fishing and putting putting uh, putting it out there what the sport's all about and your guys general vibe really dig it it's something i can definitely and uh, do get behind right. um yeah wishing you guys family and and friends and everybody like a really uh, a good 2021 um and yeah hope everybody's safe with all this covid nonsense and hopefully yeah just get out there and throw a fly rod it's great social distancing hell yeah man yeah. yes Absolutely. it is it is <laughs> Beauty. All right. Thanks, Richard. Same, same to you, Rich. Rich. Take yeah. care. Go Lovely to see you. you. See you Peace soon. Peace out, guys. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Bye, Rich. Bye. Miss that guy. I know he's great. He's such a nice guy. He's so, so he's so in, well informed. Super, man. super cool, like, dude. He, he's so knowledgeable. It's it's unbelievable. He's a wicked angler. I mean, even yeah. I remember like I was super I'm, smart about like the history. Yeah, I'm remembering back yeah. to um, when we spent the day with him, you know, and like yeah, he was he was just like telling us all about the history of the rivers we were fishing and yeah i mean like he's uh super knowledgeable and, and super Jam super cool packed full of information so much information wow. do you look at that folder yeah. he sent us of the pictures the places he's fished it's mental yeah like jurassic oh Lake, yeah it's insane uh, it's mental it's the seychelles uh what is it here uh cape salt cape streams nabia nubian flats uh zambezi tigers which we didn't even talk about we didn't even talk about some of this because we just yeah. have so much to talk about you know um yeah like he sent uh he sent me a list of kind of some of the places he's gone even he's even fished um uh you know um namibia for the for the yellow fish that he's talking about i mean it's just crazy crazy places he's gone and uh such a fishy life that he's had um Awesome getting to chat with him. Those are very handsome. I know. I love his. I know. I got to get my hair cut, man. Like, I was like, dang, he's got, got a, a cool fresh style, cut yeah. going on. I'm like, I know he had COVID, a fresh man. haircut. I was like, oh my God, I look like an I look like a, a animal person. I look like a caveman, <laughs> full on, full on caveman. <laughs> you know, I'm living like one too these days. But anyway, <laughs> wicked chat. Super cool. Yeah, we got to go back to South Africa because it, there's, it's cr- like so many opportunities, even just between what he was saying, like, yeah, the rainbows, amazing freestone river fishing, classic upstream, dries, and then the salt, which has all these fish that are just insane. Like we got to post some of these pictures that he sent us because they're they're so oh, sick. Oh yeah, and um, yeah, like Grunter. Or, hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, 
sounds right up my alley anyway after he's like yeah. oh, they're kind of like redfish i was like oh, yeah. and a permit combined, a permit like, combined. well i've never caught a permit but i've definitely fished for them so yeah 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 it's definitely you know it's yeah he was talking about trigger fish i was like oh man that's such a cool way because i've never heard someone explain i think it was also jared from uh, yeah. fly lords that said he jared from fly lords yeah trigger mm-hmm. fish and it's just that idea of like he's like their eyes move like a chameleon crazy they look crazy like and they have to they come by their side and size up your fly that's so cool what a cool, <laughs> what a cool yeah. experience that is trigger when fish. you look at them they're kind of like a fish profile in reverse like they yeah. go small to large yeah, like, they do look like a football you know what i mean you know what i mean like yeah. they're yeah. like they look like they look like their tail should be their head and their totally. head should be their tail oh, yeah i love how you described it and uh, his storytelling is fantastic well it's one know? of the like he's one of the like, he had i mean we could talk to him about so many different things right because it's like yeah. The Freestone Rivers are one thing, you know, which we talk, we have a podcast uh, episode on when we, when we did our trip, we, we talked all about that. Um, but then, yeah, the, the Cape Town fly fishing, you know, in the salt, but then all the places that he's gone up, you know, North, right. Like, um, uh, like we didn't even talk about Zambezi and that's like tiger fish. It's like, I, I got We got to do tiger fish. Like th- that looks so fun. You know? I feel like if we go to Obviously. Africa, we should just like stay there for a while. <laughs> yeah. He's like, make sure you come down for a few days. I'm like, we're going to come down for like, Two months, man. And we're a just month. gonna like travel yeah, around exactly. and yeah. just fish like Zambezi, you know. Just oh, try yeah. to go all over. I try to get one of those those largemouth yellowfish. Look insane. Yeah, those are cool. Those are really no neat. offense to the smallmouth yellowfish, but the largemouth, a twenty pound. It's almost got like a striper cool. kind of thing going on, but then it's got the large scales and color of a kind of a carp, and then you know, it's so cool looking. It's a wild fish, and like the fact the smallmouth one looks a lot like a Rocky Mountain whitefish. Yeah, yeah, an overgrown Rocky Mountain. But the large, the largemouth one looks like this kind of. Yeah, you're right. It's straight. It's got a, like a head, a head like a head striper. A striper. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, the yeah. smallmouth does look like a whitefish. It's true. Yeah, it's cool. Eh? It's cool learning about indigenous species you don't hear about, right? Because it's yeah. like with so much media and stuff mm-hmm. it's surrounding fly fishing, it's always kind of cool to hear about something new. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah. I was totally. like yellowfish. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, and, and it's like a whole other world, right? I mean, we're just, it's so different from kind of what we're used to fly fishing close to home, obviously. Mm-hmm. It's just part of the world, but grunter and, and all these fish like that, I've never, I have never really heard about before. And they're like the most amazing targets on a fly rod, you know? Yeah, grunter mm-hmm. sounds super cool. That'd be, a, that'd be a trip right there. Oh, yeah. It's for grunter, yeah. Also, when you look at his pictures and it's just like, you know, uh, the settings are ridiculous. Like when you, when you click the Cape Town folder, there it's just like, or at Cape Salt, it's just like, oh man, like where he's fishing, it's so beautiful. Just, you know? I know there's a dramatic cliffs and yeah, you can see yeah, like, it's pretty, know, pretty tabletop, rugged tabletop mountain there in the background of some of the photos. He's just like yeah. fishing grunters. It's like pff, that looks wild. So yeah, cool, man. Crazy. Well, we'll post all these photos for sure. Yeah, we'll definitely um, get some of these out there. And and everybody listening, hey, you know, um, if you're ever uh, looking for a really fun trip, check, check out, um, check out, you know, consider South Africa and Cape town and, um, upstream fly fishing. Those, those, those guys are running really awesome trips and that's how we hooked up with Richard and, uh, um, check out upstream. We'll put the link to them in the show notes, but you can Google upstream fly fishing and find them pretty easily. Yeah. And check out the mission fly mag because, yeah. uh, they're publishing out of Cape town and yeah, the mission we will post that as well. And, um, we should talk to those guys too. Try to get some uh, some of those guys on, you know. Um, Definitely. Yeah, like Africa is just such an interesting, you know, it's such a obviously a huge continent, and there's so many opportunities, yeah. interesting opportunities for fly fishing there. You know, um, I mean, cool. let's start with talking about South Africa and kind of work our way up. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, we'll get to, yeah, we'll get to Egypt one day and Morocco. You know, start at the bottom. <laughs> and... We got to do a show on Zambi on the Zambezi and, and tigerfish. Uh, mm-hmm. God, I got Imagine fly fishing the Nile River. Oh my God, that'd be amazing. You know what? I'm gonna. I don't text. know. I don't know if there's anything in there. You, what if you can do, fish I don't for? Know. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, like yeah. that would be crazy. That would be crazy. I, when I was <laughs> you, like you got the pyramids in the background. I even, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna send my buddy Frederick um, a message. His name is uh, Moiwa and Duna, and he has a lodge on the Zambezi. So I'm gonna message yes. him right now. That's right. That's right. That guy we've been telling you to message for four years. I know it. Yama always like <laughs> casually drops like we're like, man, it'd be so great to fish there. And he's like, oh yeah, well you know what, my brother actually uh, owns a fly fishing lodge there. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're flying there next. Um, yeah, he's actually flying there like tomorrow. He's like, <laughs> he's like, do you want to come? Do you know anyone that wants to come specifically I for love, free? 
I love when he was just like, oh yeah, there's permit in Tobago. And we're all like, what? <laughs> I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, Should we go? It's like, yes, we can go. <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> you can go hang out at my mom's place and fish for permit. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, that sounds pretty good to me, man. <laughs> it takes, it, it takes gotta... like less, less time going there than it does yeah. Elk Lake. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. But you know what? Although the the Cape Rivers, um, the Cape Streams, like we yep. should if we, when we go down, we should we should just spend a day fishing those anyway because they're sick. Totally. Like they're so fun. Oh, to they fish look. In them. Like oh my god, they look. They look. They look. They look. First of all, this like, like you said, the setting is pretty unreal. It's beautiful. And the fish are pretty unreal. The water's um, met like whack. How nice it is. Like that pool I was talking about. Um, mm-hmm. We'll share a picture from that too. It's like it was so cool. It was just like this perfect little pristine kind of it felt like jungly you know, pool where it's just like deep water and just like a ton of trout, just all just the photos from that were great because you guys did the little disposable cameras, so yeah. it really felt like you were on like a vacation <laughs> from a different time. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Totally. We got a text. We got a text from Zambia. All right. Um, you got like a text back already. The... You just texted yeah, him. He's he already responded. Hundred percent. Yeah, he goes. He goes. <laughs> his dad's lodge is ready to go. Uh, ready to go in terms of um, like. Basically, what he said is, but the thing is, you may have to camp there or stay at the the B and B because the lodge isn't built yet. So, but everything's landscaped and ready to go. So we're allowed to fish and so we go camp on the Zambezi. Yeah, there's elephants. Yeah, there's elephants, hippos, and stuff like that that we have to worry about. But I'll 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 text them. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, let's do that. That sounds cool. Yeah, sure, whatever. Pencil it in for a weekend. Yeah, we'll see if we have time. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We, yeah, exactly. I don't know, man. I, I was kind of fit, hoping to fish the Ottawa River this year. Like, I don't know. I might <laughs> hey, we sh- we should, man. I haven't fished the Ottawa River, and I know. Yeah, we should take we should take Yoma. Yeah, to show 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 them where our roots lay. Go catch some catfish yeah, behind Parliament. Like, the Parliament buildings. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah, go. we can go. We can go catch a car. My mom. My mom lives right on the river. Nice. We'll go. We'll call we'll it fish uh, capital pool. fishing. Hey, there you go. We'll call it what? Capital fishing. <laughs> we'll call fish it what? <laughs> <laughs> fish the capital. Oh my god! Okay, just stop. Yeah, we'll go back. We'll fish. We'll fish there, but definitely Zamb- Zambezi. Jesus. We'll call. We'll call Colin McCuna. Yeah, we'll go. We'll call him. That'd be fun. Go fish. Fish bass in the Mississippi. But yes, definitely uh the Zambezi would be sick. Yeah, it'd be I'd be terrified camping, but I would definitely want to do it just to. Just a, just even just one night. Yeah, totally. There's a B and B as well um, that his dad has set up for. I don't know how many. Rooms, yeah, but, but I mean, like, imagine saying you camped on the Zambezi. Yeah, yeah, but you guys know me. I freak out, so I don't know. <laughs> you like freak one, out. You, you freak out. You freak and... out tomogamy. So exactly. Yeah, like a hippo <laughs> might really get you going. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's the most aggressive <laughs> animal in the world. Yeah, <laughs> might do it for you. Yeah, Mitch, I think you could take one though. That's a hippo for good. sure. You sure. me? They call me the wall, man. You know, you can't knock me over. You are the wall. You're like you're like the short a hedgehog, I'm like a little hedgehog. The center of gravity. You're like a yeah. I could flip a hippo. <laughs> I could. You're flip like an armadillo. Hippo. Armadillo. Yes. You're like a little armadillo. Hell yeah, man. I love that. I'll, I, don't worry, Yama. I got you. I'll protect you from the the pose, the hippos. Yeah. They, they call me the wall. They call me the wall. They call me the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was really cool. It was really nice for because you guys got to spend time with him. So it was nice to actually meet him face to face. Yeah, so to speak. Yeah, and uh, and chat with Richard seems like a, a rad dude. Hell yeah, man! Yeah, it was yeah. a great chat, Richard. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on the show. Um, everybody, thanks for listening, and um, we hope you enjoyed hearing about South Africa. More to come on on Africa and South Africa for sure. You know, we just kind of touched the surface of a bunch of topics, but um, we'll we'll dive into each of those in the coming uh, well, in the coming months. And um, anyway, thanks everybody for listening. That's it for me, Mitch uh, Yelma. Thanks everyone. Aldo. Thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, thanks for listening, and take care. You can find all of SoFly's content at SoFly.ca. On Instagram, we're at the SoFly Crew. You can reach us at thesofflycrew at gmail.com with any questions, comments, or concerns. On Facebook, we're SoFly, and our podcast is available on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Spotify.